let me share my screen. Perfecto. Hello, all. Hello, everyone. And I'm going to drop a, I'm going to drop a here bomb. Oh, you, you dropped the here bomb. OK, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, can folks see, a, is this good size here? Yeah, it looks good to me. OK, cool. All right. Uh, so I, I think uh, I, I was not able to join you yesterday because I was, or, sorry, not yesterday, but last week because uh, I was doing the uh, talk at uh, Scale IO in France. But uh, it sounds like it took you on a wonderful journey of type inference that sounds <laughs> like reached apotheosis by the end. <laughs> yeah, we, we we got something doing something. It was it was uh, it was it was exciting, uh, okay. <laughs> a little scary, but a good. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, could you share a link with me to the um, oh, live yes. share? Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. Share, share. Do you, do you know when they're gonna have those to ask the question that everyone always asks us? Recording, please. When when is the uh, the Scala IO? Or have you got any heads up? Eventually, I, th I think next week. Um, I got I got some deadline by Tuesday to kind of give them like some information for it. Um, so I imagine it'll be shortly after that. Sounds good. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I know it's a little bit of a bummer. It was one conference that was not like available live, but I guess it's part of the like trying to get people to come in person. You got to have some like <laughs> carrot. Uh, so anyway, uh, that was last week, but the week before that we uh we're at the zeo hackathon and we were starting to do i guess kind of version 2.0 of our zeo from scratch series and we were exploring how we could implement uh zeo and fibers in a more zeo 2-ish way and in particular we were looking at this idea of we had this um fiber runtime that what that had this like um nano actor architecture in a way uh, so all the interaction with the fiber from the external world happened through this inbox where people could send these fiber messages. And initially, these fiber messages were very limited. We just right now we just say we can start, which just says start the fiber initially. We can add an observer, which is saying I'm interested in this result of the fiber. Run this callback when it's done. And then we had this resume, which we use as part of implementing this async functionality. Uh, which lets us create these asynchronous CO effects where uh, maybe they're going to call some third party API. And then when that third party API uh, has a result, it's going to call the fiber back and tell it to resume with this result. And that's going to let us wrap these uh, asynchronous callback based APIs uh, in this nice uh, Zio wrapper so that we um, don't have to work with callbacks directly. Uh, and then what that let us do is we, we had to implement uh, some infrastructure to kind of support that like nano actor architecture. So we had a method that offered to the inbox and we had a method that drained things from the inbox. Uh, but the nice thing about that was that it wrapped up almost everything having to do with concurrency in this like actor type machinery. And so when we actually executed the run loop, uh, everything could be synchronous. And so like here we had this logic of like, if we've got a value and there are no more continuations to run, then we're basically done. And what we do here is we just take each of those observers who said they were interested in the results of the fiber and we just give them the result. And if we were in the, the Zia 1.0 example of this, if we if you kind of go back to that like Zia from scratch series, this was a lot more tricky because we had all these race conditions of like, well, what if while in the brother process of doing this, someone adds a new observer? And what the this nano actor architecture does is it makes that impossible because uh, these messages are always processed sequentially. Uh, you offer something to the inbox, and then if someone's already running, then you just leave it in the inbox and they'll eventually run it. And if not, you start running it. But messages are always processed from the inbox uh, sequentially. So it lets us kind of package up that complexity in this one place and then keep the rest of our code in this fiber runtime, which is already complex in other ways in terms of just where um, we don't have a lot of type safety here because uh, we have these different effects of different types and we're trying to be efficient and low level. Um, it kind of lets us keep that as comprehensible as possible. 
so last time we got to, I think, a pretty good ending point mm -hmm. where we uh, we basically had implemented parallelism, where we had this uh, speak with delay that was going to. Uh, I think, we, are, we, I think we, we said that this <laughs> don't don't do this at home, but we just wanted to create a delay. So we have this uh, workflow that's going to actually block a thread uh, and take a certain amount of time. Uh, and we did zip with par with two of these. And so we had this one that was going to run three seconds, this one that was going to run five seconds, and we ran them together. Mm -hmm. And let's see, projects, project, uh, scratch. And if we run this, cool. Uh, I think that took a little while just because we had to compile. Let's just do it one more time to kind of yeah, I, I deleted verify those. for ourselves. I also deleted those nothings from above. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can see it is completed in five seconds, which makes sense because it can't complete until this thing completes. Uh, but it does five seconds and not eight seconds, which is kind of proof for us that these things really are running in parallel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a great uh, milestone, uh, but we want to do more, more. Uh, so what we were going to try to work on today was building up to uh, supporting interruption, uh, which is going to be a little bit interesting because we're kind of skipping a couple of steps here. Um, so I think one of the things that Kit and I are going to have to figure out as we work through this is kind of how much we want to skip versus do. Mm -hmm. um, and we can we can discuss that as, as we go here. But first, maybe let's just check in on like questions and comments, see if anyone has no, anything. No questions, no questions so far in the Discord. Okay. Yeah, okay, perfect. If you have anything burning, put it in now. But uh, <laughs> I'll interrupt with those. But uh, yeah, should we sketch out maybe a, sort of a? I know in the past making a little to do list for ourselves. Maybe we have one at the top of the page already. Yeah, yeah, sort of like, yeah. What path could we follow here? Yeah. So I think maybe we'll, we'll start with our with our end goal. Um, so uh, we could say that uh, we want to support interrupting a workflow uh, and getting its result. Uh, what, now, what yeah. would its result be in the case of an interruption? Well, so that that's, I think, going to be kind of a little bit of what we're missing of it's, uh, it's going to be some type of interrupted failure, uh, which is going to bring up the fact that we don't have a failure modeled anywhere here. Sure. Uh, so if we if we kind of did the I would say the like fully like logical path, um, then we'll have to see how how much we want to follow it or or kind of not follow it. I think we would probably say uh, we want to first introduce the typed error channel. Mm -hmm. uh, then we would want to generalize it to include um, some concept of a cause. Uh, mm -hmm. including defects and interruption. And that's going to kind of give us the, the groundwork that we need for doing this, uh, this interruption. Um, but I think we may be able to um, give ourselves, maybe we could call it a poor man's version of that. Though so also I'm, I'm open to your, your thoughts. Do you think we should just... Um, Kind of try to do some of this stuff or should yeah. we try to skip ahead okay yeah like okay. i think that'll i think that'll help and i think you know in in general this will if someone who is new to zio is here uh I, I think a great way to understand the error model would be to implement it as well it's definitely something that's pretty useful to everyone so i don't think it'll be a waste of, of time so yeah I, I think we should do it if you're if you're down yeah let's do it uh so i think this is basically there's gonna be a little bit of Slightly boilerplate stuff, but I, I think probably good for everyone to see of essentially we got to take all our ZO of A's and make them ZOs of EA. And if we keep doing this series, we'll eventually have another session where we'll change all our ZO EAs to ZO REAs. But right now we'll just stick with the E. Um, and I think there's probably no better way than just starting to do it and deal with the compilation errors. Yep. Uh, so we're going to say this uh, ZO A. It, its contract is kind of going to change. So like we could say the previous contract was a ZO of A is a workflow that will 
eventually produce an A. And the new contract uh, is that a ZOEA uh, is a workflow that will eventually either succeed with an A or fail with an E. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually put that E there. And now I'm going to get lots of compilation failures. Uh, but we'll just kind of trace those through. Uh, so <laughs> you know, I'm going to I'm going to take advantage of I know a little bit that because this uh, type here is in covariant position, it's not going to be happy if I have it in contravariant position here. So I'm going to do this E1 is a super type. Oh, super type Duh. of E trick just to get this to compile. Uh, and maybe before we, yeah, we'll have to fix that signature, but before we, we do that, let's just like dwell for a second on what the signature is saying. So what this is saying is if I've got an original workflow that can fail with an E, and then I use its result, and then I run another workflow that can fail with some other error type that's more general than E, then my whole workflow can fail with that more general type. Um, so hopefully I think that makes sense of if our original workflow, maybe it can't fail at all, but our new workflow can fail with a no such element exception, then running the both together could fail with no such element exception because we could run the first one and then while we're running the second one, we could fail and then that would be our failure. Uh, so that's how to think about what that E1 type there is. Uh, another, another good mnemonic is that if you're, if you're having to use covariance and you're not really used to it, you're very sad. And you're probably gonna make a very sad face. That's really <laughs> deep frown. And then you can just put that symbol in there and everything should compile. Nice. But it, your, your, your explanation made more sense. <laughs> um, so I'm just maybe gonna follow this down. And so this one, I'm gonna give it an E. And I'm gonna give these guys an E. And so maybe then I'll go back up here. And so this map is gonna, it's not gonna change the error type. So we'll just have an E there. Let's keep, uh, so the zip with par, this is another one that's like uh, flat map. So this will just we'll do, give it the E1 treatment. Uh, and then let's look at what we've got going on here. Uh, so I think this is probably just, we have other things that aren't right yet. So maybe let's, uh, okay, so succeed is going to give us a Z and nothing A. Great. Uh, and then this is going to be nothing A. Uh, this will be an E and an E. Gets super fast here. <laughs> uh, let's see. So this will be a Z and nothing unit. This will be a Z and nothing unit. Uh, okay, so this one, let's look at this one. This may require a little bit more thought. So this one is join on a fiber here. And so what this is getting us to is uh, just like the, uh, the ZO can have an E, the fiber can also have an E, right? The fiber is the running ZO that before could either return, would only return an A, and now it's gonna return either an E or an A. So we're going to need to push that type parameter through there. And then I can change this to EA. Mm -hmm. And then I think I've just got a few more of these. So this will be any, any. Uh, this will be zero, any, 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 any. OK. Um, let's look at this fork. OK, so this one. Uh, yeah, so the fork itself can't fail, but the fiber <laughs> that is fork can fail with an E. Cool. And now we just, oh, and we just need a type bound here. So we can unify these. Okay.
Yay. So we are compiling again. So we haven't actually added any functionality. We've just added additional type parameter, but <laughs> sometimes you got to lay the scaffolding first. Uh, so let's try running our program again. Just make sure it still works. Okay. Yeah, if we, right. could we actually jump to the like line 95, the, the DSL? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, if we, if we trace the combinators, the E never really <laughs> There's not a refers, it refers to a necessity, yeah, or at the base is a nothing. So it's E is always going to be nothing everywhere as we have it today. So yeah, maybe we should maybe we should uh, create a new fundamental operator, but I'll, I'll let you guys from here. <laughs> yeah, as well. So I think that's exactly the right way to go. And one way that can be useful when you think about um, adding like a new type parameter or fundamental operators, uh, a lot of times is the idea of having a introduction operator and a elimination operator. Uh, so if we think about errors, like how would we introduce an error? How would we essentially fail with an error in, in this domain? And then how would we recover from an error? Uh, and so we can do those. Uh, the pretty basic one is going to be we could have some case class that's fail with an E. Uh, and this one can, I think, be pretty similar to succeed here. Uh, at least in our initial world. Uh, and so this will just be basically the dual of succeed. Of succeed takes this A and gives us a Z O nothing A. Fail fails and gives us a Z O E nothing. Cool. So that would be how we could create a Z O that failed. Mm -hmm. And then the other operator that um, handles errors uh, they're, they're kind of slightly different primitives we can use, uh, but a, the one that's actually used in, in, in Zeo, and I think a pretty useful one, is what you could call a uh, fold. Uh, and so this will be a little bit like flat map, but it's going to be more powerful than flat map, because you'll see here that flat map only gets the ability to work with the uh, value channel, right? So if this first one succeeds, then we're going to run this continuation, this and then function. And then we're going to run this other ZO that it produces. Uh, but if the first one fails, then just by what we have here and by the type signature, we don't get to do anything with the failure. We just pass that failure through. Uh, so fold instead is going to give us the ability to handle the success and the failure. Uh, so we could say that's going to take an R E uh, A. And Not then, <laughs> what's that? No R yet. <laughs> no R yet. Yeah. Uh, and then it's going to take, uh, maybe we call this on failure. And this gets to both return a new success type potentially, but also return a new error type. And that error type could potentially be nothing if it's maybe it's going to just uh, catch all of these errors and just log them, for example. Uh, and then we're also going to have this uh, on success continuation uh, that's going to get to do that. And then this will be two. Okay, so now that we've got these, we can implement some actual methods on. Uh, ZO to use those. And maybe if, if we were using our usual super lazy construction, we would have done that first, but we kind of did it the opposite way here. Uh, but so the first one I'm going to implement is one called fail. Uh, and so I can fail with an E, and this is just going to be ZO.fail. Uh, and then this other one, this fold, uh, I can use that up here. And I can implement a bunch of operators in terms of that. Uh, so I think the most powerful one is going to be this one that's called fold zio right now. And it's just going to have a similar signature to what we looked at before. Let's call this fold. And then I can use that to implement a whole ton of other error handling operators. Uh, so for example, a pretty useful one is one called catch all. 
uh, and this one. It's, it's really funny to see what the, uh, the copilot does here. <laughs> And we'll just call oh, this. Oh, not quite. <laughs> Copilot needs quite close. Do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just look at this. Got a method, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if, if you go to the actual Zio code base, you'll see there are so many different variants of like error handling operators that are implemented in terms of this fold Zio. But this is kind of the uh, most powerful one that lets you look at both the error type and the value type and perform whatever Zio workflows you want to based on those. Uh, and maybe we can just look for a minute at what the, that would actually look like in uh, practice here. Uh, so if this is right, then we should be able to do something like val my uh, workflow is equal to zio dot fail fail. And then maybe we wanna catch all of these and this should let us see that. And then, yeah, maybe we just want to print it out. And then, yeah, we run. So that seems quite lovely. Uh, but if we uh, if we run this right now, it's going to blow up for us quite horribly with, uh, I think, probably a match error. We can try and find out. Oh, but I think maybe we're, oh, we're running this other one first. Oh, let me comment that out, yeah. <laughs> Five seconds. Yep. Uh, so yeah, we indeed did fail with a match error. Lovely. Uh, so let's work on fixing that. So the reason that happened is because in this run loop here, we were not matching on these cases. And I think I, I guess we don't have very uh, very good compiler settings because we're not getting any match exhaustivity warning there. Uh, but uh, it doesn't matter for us right now. We will just uh, do it ourselves. Okay, so yeah, as, as we've set out here, we've got these two different uh, cases we've got to implement. And if we can implement handling these two correctly and any other infrastructure that requires, then we should be able to actually run our example below. And then if we go back to our to-do list, we can kind of check off the first thing on our to-do list and approach interruption. Uh, so when I do this, I like to just take it incrementally. Uh, and so I think the simplest one here is going to be just this zio.fail one. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is actually even already going to start to like uh, raise a little bit of a question for us because um, so so let's start doing this the same way we did uh, with zio succeed here. Uh, and if you remember from last time we started with zio succeed, we didn't even worry about flat map or the fact that we had this stack. We just said, well, we've got a value. Let's like return it. So let's think about what that would uh, entail. Uh, so we could say, okay, we have this failure. It's a terminal failure. So what we we're doing before is we had this result thing uh, that we were setting to A. And the result was just an A. Mm. Uh, but so what we're seeing here is that this result type is, is kind of not big enough anymore to encompass what the result could be, because it's not necessarily an A. Uh, maybe it's an E. And so one really straightforward way we could solve that is we could just make this an either, and we just make it an either EA. Uh, but what I think I'm going to suggest here is uh, maybe this is a good opportunity to implement a data type in Zio you may have seen called exit, uh, which is kind of a Zio-specific version of an either that has some other stuff built into it that we'll kind of get to in the in the next step of our of our evolution here. Uh, but right now we can just create our own. And so I'm gonna go down here and I'm just gonna create this thing. It's called a sealed trait exit. Yeah, one one thing to think about just when designing data model 
doing data modeling in general is that you might have a, a type off the shelf that fits your purposes at that moment, like say an either happened to be of the right shape for us. But just by putting in a little, a little extra work and making our own sort of named type, not only do we get the documentation of, uh, you know, this is saying exactly what we want it to in this context, but we can also extend it. <laughs> so we, when we finally do uh, sort of outgrow either, we can just, you know, we already have done the hard work of creating our own data type and can easily extend it from there. So definitely do that. Even if, you know, sometimes you can use a Boolean or something else. Sometimes you might want to make a sealed traits like toggle or something that fits your exact uh, uh, use case. Anywho, tangent complete, typing complete. Uh, uh, all right, so let's go back to where we define that result thing. And so now this result is going to become an X at EA. And I guess it'll still start as null, but now it becomes instance of X EA. And now we should hopefully get some compilation errors here. Uh, okay, so here we could say result equals exit dot success. Of a, so that's happy. Now I'm I'm suspicious that we we I think we do have to make more changes, but this is one of the cases where because we're operating this low level and we don't have types everywhere, sometimes we're not getting as much support from the compiler as like in a perfect world we'd like to in our normal code. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm suspicious because we changed the type of result, and so we had to change the type of what we're assigning to results, but we haven't changed the type of anything where where we're using the result. Mm -hmm. um, like on line 188, for instance. Uh, 188 would be a very good one, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so here we can see we've got this thing that's called this observer, and right now it's typed as any because that a type. Um, at the level of the of the fiber message, uh, if we go back to that for a second, or it's not here, it's down here. So, you know, at the level of the fiber message, uh, it doesn't know what the type of this thing is. And this is essentially the type of the A. But so what we can do here is we can change this to being a callback that takes say exit any to any. And now hopefully we will get some more. Yeah, so here then, so we had this observers thing, and now it's gonna be a set of exit any to any. And then here, when we call back the observer, uh, so we could just do exit.success, or we could actually just call it back with the so result. Good. Yeah. Probably a little bit nicer. Let's see. Oh, but it uh, thinks it needs it to be the a different type. <laughs> uh, oh, well, hold on. I think that's because we did not use. I've missed a plus sign, I believe. Oh there yes, okay. I believe. Uh, Yay, variants. One may have caught that in the chat as well. <laughs> oh, lovely. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, uh, one, one quick question. Uh, yeah. In, in Discord um, from Majesty potentially, uh, was ha would be how do you balance feature flexibility when introducing concepts like exit versus the cognitive load of introducing a new thing that might not be immediately understood? Is it introducing exit now better than starting with an either and refactoring later? Well, hopefully, I guess either is something that is fairly universally understood, but sometimes, you know, th there could be a lot of either's used in a lot of contexts. Sometimes you do want the sort of actually weird nature of either, if we just think about the word either, uh, we're used to it as functional programmers, uh, you know, the anti sinisterial bias of functional programmers that says left is a failure and right is good. Uh, that we sort of think left error, right good. So when we see either like that, we might think, oh, this is probably this result is representing a failure. But there are other contexts where you might want to use an either to represent just two different values, be it, you know, the, this canonical basic sum, uh, sum type that isn't necessarily a failure and a success. And so I would actually say that by naming it exit, we get to give it a specific semantic purpose. And yes, you won't necessarily know exactly what it is without command clicking on it right away. But I'd say you now have the ability to sort of give more description and sort of built in documentation in a way that will never expire uh, to that. So I'd, I'd argue for doing that more often than not. But, you know, it's not the huge pain in the butt to, to be forced to abstract uh, later, but sometimes it never happens. And I think this is a kind of 
premature abstraction that isn't really so bad because it's in the it's just in sort of specificity of data modeling rather than reaching for something off the shelf that happens to coincidentally work in that moment. So yeah, I don't think it's the end of the world if you use neither, but maybe something yeah. worth thinking about. I, I think there's also an element here of we we have a little bit of an idea of where we're going here, and we know we want to generalize this to include this cause thing, which at that point we're kind of going to want to do this. So um, I, I think yeah, we we could have we could have totally done either for this uh, exercise, uh, and then kind of in 15 minutes switched it to uh, exit. But just because I'm kind of seeing ahead a little bit, I'm. I'm trying to <laughs> uh, li limit how much we're we're doing that just so we can kind of um, cover cover some ground here. But I think it would be totally fine to use either initially and then refactor later. Uh, okay, so let's try just running our um, let's try running our normal program, maybe our previous one, just to this one's not still not going to work because we're not having the first part work yet. Uh, and I think this is still probably not going to do everything we want it to do. I think we are missing something here. Yeah, make sure it's we didn't blow up. Hello? Yeah, exactly. We're, oh, yeah, there's yeah. an explosion. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. So this is... 72. Oh, that's probably not correct, though. Uh, not actually, yeah. Uh, 212. So I have a feeling it's in our unsafe run sync, I would guess, because, uh, yeah, because okay, so here we go. So right here, we're saying, this result is null as instance of A, mm -hmm. but it's actually uh, an X at EA. And probably that means that this entire thing needs to be changed to return an exit. Uh, cool. Let's oh. try running this. And then it didn't like A, so should we say here exit dot success? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh. Seems to be sad anyway. Where is this A? Okay, well, so I think that's going to be uh, fine for now, but what we're going to probably need here is we're going to need uh, to do our little fold uh, Zio mm -hmm. thing because mm -hmm. we need to handle both of these possibilities. Uh, and so then I can make this. Oh, I think you were doing the same thing. <laughs> Should I just copy that up there? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Nice. Cool. Got that auto compilation going again. Okay. Uh, and now, so I think we fixed that, but uh, now we actually really need to implement the fold ZO because now it's used uh, right here. So we definitely need to implement this. So let's uh, go back to the run loop and let's think about what we're doing here. So this fold is kind of like a uh, flat map. It's really very similar to it in a way of we're saying, okay, we want to run this thing. And then we want to keep track of these are the things that we need to run later. Uh, but we're going to need to do a little bit more with just what the nature of this uh, stack is. Uh, because if we look at the stack right now, uh, the stack is the stack of essentially these are called any's, but right now this is actually the A. These are functions from A to Z O N E N E. And what we need is essentially functions from uh, either or exit of any -E any -E to this Z O of any -E any. -E. Uh, so why don't we create some more types here to help ourselves? Uh, and to the earlier question about, I think, when to create domain specific types, another thing that's helpful to think about is uh, how much is this going to be exposed to your users and do you want to expose that type? So like the exit type is probably ultimately going to be exposed to our users and maybe we do want to expose it because it's like a very specific type that says like here's the result of a ZO workflow. But other times we'll have 
uh, data types, like here, this continuation thing is kind of just going to be used by us. And I think that's a great case to really use, use a lot of them because they're helping you and they're not making your API any more complicated here. Uh, so I think what I'm uh, going to do is I'm going to create uh, maybe a sealed trait called continuation. And we could put it in here, or maybe we eventually move it to the uh, companion object of this uh, fiber runtime. Um, but maybe we'll have two of these. Uh, and so one of them, maybe we call on success. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's going to have, maybe we'll just call it on success. And this is going to be basically the same thing that we had in here. So this will be a function from any to zero, any, any. Uh, and this is going to extend continuation. Perfect. Uh, oops, we had too much. Oh, uh, surprise, that's a good starting point. And we're going to have another one called on success uh, and failure. And this is just going to have two. So it's going to have the on success. And it's also going to have on failure here. Nice. Uh, oh, and then there's a weird Scala thing where if you make these final, it gives you this warning. So yeah, just get rid of the, the final there. Uh, OK, so now we've got that, but we're not using it anywhere. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to change the stack from being a stack of just these functions to being a stack of these continuations. Interesting. So this is this that seems like a new abstraction since Z01. Was that there in Z01 at some point? Uh, or is this a, there, a new... there, there's there's a variant of this. I mean, there are a couple of ways to kind of do this. Um, like you can you, you basically you need some way of pushing both the, the flat map continuations and the fold continuations onto the stack. And you need a way of knowing uh, which are which. Uh, so in Z01, we did this thing where like the fold itself like extends a function yeah, from like E. So, I mean, we could definitely do it that way too. Um, it's just two different approaches and I'm not sure one is better than the other. I think this is maybe just like a little bit more explicit for like yeah. teachability. Uh, um, I, I, I like that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was always a little tricky because I've, I've seen that other version where we make the yeah, fold extend basically this shape. Uh, and then we sort of match on the types when we're unwinding the stack to see if it's one of those. But yeah, that's right. like, and, oh, and, that's sneaky. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we'll still have to match on it, but now we'll be matching on a sealed trade and we'll know it's kind of one of these two things. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, okay, so now we're getting some errors. And so the first one is in this flat map here. And it's basically saying, hey, you're trying to push something onto the stack, but it's just this random function. It's not a continuation. And mm -hmm. so we could just make this continuation dot on success. And then, and then, all right, so here, so we are uh, flat mapping this thing. And so, well, I think one thing we could do here, just to maybe help ourselves out, if we go back to this continuation, is interface. Yeah. We, we could give it a on success because we know that in either case, we have the ability to all the on success. I think you may not even need that because it has the oh, same. Oh, that yeah, I've never tried to do that yet. Uh, does it have okay. to be, we might have to make it a value. Is that gonna work? Okay, it looks like it's working, yeah. I think that's working. I think we have one, right. And so then we just do continuation oh, dot, okay. oops. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> uh, on success. Of a. Uh, okay, and then, oh, no, let's see. Okay, I think it's not happy with that. Um, I think so I need to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you want to try that? See if that works. We should basically yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Cool. Yep. Okay. Uh, so now what we've done is we have the ability with our stack to keep track of both of these types of continuations and 
we're going to have the ability to look at them and see which they are. So let's start to use that. Uh, so now our implementation of fold, we could start with something that's similar to flat map. So we could say, okay, well, we need to switch to running this first one. And then when you push something on the stack, except instead of just the on success, it's now gonna be the on success and failure. And it'll have the on failure and on success. Cool. Uh, and now I think we're also ready to do like at least a very initial version of this where we can say, well, let's just do like the most simple example here. Uh, so the most simple thing we could do is we could say, uh, yeah, if it's empty, we're done and we're succeeding with our failure. We're returning that as our result. Right. So if the stack's empty, yeah, we can kind of take a similar thing as this. And if we wanted to, we could probably abstract. Abstract. Yeah, we could further, we could just create some function that did that for us. But Right for now, now, it's not to have it all in one place, except yeah. you want to be there. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll get to the environment. We'll get to the environment. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, okay. So now here is where we potentially have to do a little bit more uh, work here. And so if we go back to flat map, what we did in this case is we just said, okay, well, if the stack's not empty, then we just get the next thing off the stack. And then we call that on the result. Uh, and we know that whatever's on the stack always has the ability to handle a success. Now, the problem down here is what I want to do is I want to do something like val continuation is stack.pop. And then, well, it, I don't quite want to do that. Uh, <laughs> but what I want to do, and this is not going to compile right now, mm -hmm. uh, is I want to do that basically. Yep. And so this is going to require us to think a little bit about the semantics of what do we want to do if the next thing on the stack is not a error handler, is not one of these folds, but is one of these flat maps. So like if we kind of do this in code, what if I have something, maybe just use this, dot flat map. Mm -hmm. Maybe it would be worth here sort of doing a little uh, ASCII visualization of this, because I think this is one yeah. of those things that at the beginning can sort of really yeah. get used to thinking about how these things get turned into a series of continuations on a stack is definitely a little weird. It's different, right? It's not usually how we think about programs, but um, but yeah, so I guess if we think about how this is being interpreted by our runtime, right? Every time we dot chain one of these methods onto our initial Zio, right? These are all creating different nodes in our, they're creating different uh, values that are, are part of the language of Zio. So this is really constructing a fail node, right? Calling dot flat map is actually wrapping this thing, right? In a flat map of that fail of some success. And then calling catch all on this is going to wrap it up in a fold eventually because catch all is implemented in terms of fold uh, where that's the initial ZO, then we have sort of yeah, sort of an identity here. We, we're going to get the result, uh, ZO.succeed of A. And then I think the failure, I forget which one's the failure, the failure we're going to then turn into a, a print, right? So we're going to do something else, print line. I'll simplify it, print line. So we get this huge, this huge node, and it's maybe a little complicated already, but we don't need to worry about sort of the, the values. Let's just think about maybe the... Um, Where'd flat map go? There it is. Just the fact that we have a, I wanna make it nice and organized. So we have that and then we have one last value. Uh, great. 
Okay. So we have a fold that contains a flat map that contains a fail. And so we're gonna sort of work through this from top to bottom. And so what that whole point of the, the stack thing is, is that when we come to this fold node, well, we don't even know, we have these two functions that we can call with an A or an E, but we don't have the A or the E yet. The A or the E is going to be the result of processing this nested node. And then if we go in there, we're going to see, well, that's a flat map. So we have a function from sort of taking the result of, of this. But once again, we don't know the result of this. So we have to keep sort of digging in to the values of our contained within uh, the sub zero effects contained within either the folds or the flat maps until we get to some uh, endpoint or whatever, or it's, it's an infinite zero sequence. That's fine, too. Um, we have to go until we sort of get uh, to some base node here. And if we just keep recursing and, and dropping our continuations on the floor, then we're not going to know what to do once we get that final result, that final failure. So basically, when we're at the top here in our fold, we have this result that we want to continue our execution loop with. That becomes our current zeo, right? This becomes the current zeo, whatever's in there. And then these sort of things have to, we have to store them. So that's what that stack is for. We're going to push onto our stack Basically, this this fold, its continuations. We're going to make one of those uh, those on case, the, yeah. the on, on success or failure for the fold exactly. case, and then we're going to sort of recurse. So on the flat map case, this fail becomes our current zero, and now we have to think about what's going to happen. Right, it's a, it's a stack, so we're going to push this continuation onto our stack here. So the flat map one, which is basically going to be the on succeed only. So now we have this stack, so we can only read from the left-hand side, push on to here. If these were all successes, well, then once we finally got to the bottom, we could start pulling them off one by one, passing the success into this flat map. Maybe there were multiple flat maps, passing the success into this fold. And we sort of work our way, we work our way to the bottom, and then we sort of work our way back up, calling those in reverse order that they were pushed to the stack. But in this case, if it's a failure at the bottom, we basically just want to dig through our stack until we get to the first uh, continuation that can handle a failure. So by just basically throwing all the flat maps on the floor until we get to uh, the, the success. I hope that little mini ASCII visualization helps, but uh, definitely definitely a little tricky. Yeah, and I, I think that's the key insight that if we get an error and we have a continuation as a flat map versus a fold, we we essentially, as you said, we we don't run it. We just discard it. And that's the that's what it means to have these fail fast semantics, where if we have this program, our expectation is because this thing failed, this thing will never be run, right? You can imagine like this is getting some data from a database and this is like doing some further computations with that data. So if we can't even get the data from the database, then there's no, if there's no point, there's not even a sensible way to do something with the data that doesn't exist. And so all we can do is skip ahead to the first thing that can handle this failure and do something with it. Yay. <laughs> cool. ASCII animation complete. Uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, but cool, let's yeah. actually implement that now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's uh, scroll up to uh, our run loop here. And maybe I'll just make a little helper method for ourselves here. Uh, so maybe I'll say uh, find next error handler. Uh, and so this is going to give us a, uh, what do we call it, a continuation dot on success and failure. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we could do is we could say var loop equals true. Uh, and then maybe we could say var continuation is null, uh, except this needs to be this success and failure thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we could say something. Uh, actually, we may not even need the loop here because I think we can. Uh, oh, no problem. Well, uh, so I while, okay, I see. while loop and. Uh, oh, I guess all we have is stack.pop. Um, oh, well, that's fine. Uh, so maybe we'll say while loop. Uh, Continuation is equal to stack.pop. 
And then we can say uh, if the continuation is null, then loop equals false, right? That just means there, there are no more continuations. So we'll just return this null value, which we'll handle before the same way we handled pop. And otherwise, we could match on the continuation. And so it's either continuation dot on success and failure. Maybe I'll do the uh, little continuation. Continuation at. I think we might need to give it a slightly Maybe different... A different name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Perfect. And then we could just say continuation equals on success and failure. Uh, and it's false. And otherwise, we're just not. Oops. Oh, actually, maybe maybe because you're setting it every time here to stacked up pop. Um, so yeah, that, do we want a different uh, value? Oh here? yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we? Yeah. yeah, why don't we call this just like cont or something? Okay. So, yeah, a few different notions. Make sure we don't shadow the wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is that happy now? Oh, oh continuation. Continuation dot. Oh. oh. Can't type. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, so I mean, this is a little bit ugly because it's kind of imperative stuff with the stack. But all we're doing here is we're saying, look at the stack and just basically dig for a error handler and just keep throwing things away until you find the error handler. And as soon as you find the error handler, then bring it back. And otherwise, if you if you can't if you dug through everything and you find an error handler, then just return null. So okay. then here. Instead of doing stack.pop, I could make this find next error handler. And now if I hover over this, I've got a continuation dot on success and failure. And so now I could do the same thing that I did here with Zio succeed, except now it's going to be current Zio equals continuation dot on failure. Check if null, <laughs> right? Because it could be null in this case, right? Our, our um, yeah, I think, let's see, where are we? Uh, that is, uh, oh, well, uh, yes, yes, we should definitely check if it's null. Sorry, in the, in the other one, we didn't have that issue because we checked where the stack was empty. So by the time we popped it, we knew it wasn't, but here, well, uh, I guess the that's difference exactly that, right. Like, yeah, that, right, right. It, we, we, we might throw things away. So that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, uh, and so then do, maybe actually what we want to do. Invert it, right? We want to, yeah, may, I think maybe the first thing we want to do is we want to find this thing. Then mm -hmm. we could say if continuation is equal to null, do this thing, else, okay. That makes All sense. Right. I mean. <laughs> so I, I think we're in good shape here. We've definitely done a lot of lower level stuff and we don't have enough type safety. So there's some possibility we're gonna blow up here, but why don't we try actually running this and see where we are? Yep. Uh, oh, we sold it. Okay, so we're running the parallel oh. one. <laughs> oh, and we're not running the other one. And it blew up. So oh, that's and cool. it blew up. Okay, so let's okay. see. Exit success uh, cannot be flat cast to box unit. Uh, line 78, line maybe 231 is the problem. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, well, this needs to be exit any, any. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, when dealing with the type erasure, you have to <laughs> take on some challenges and definitely want to have a lot of tests if you're ever running writing your own uh, type erased runtime because the compiler oh. will be able to help you uh, in these in these instances because the type is constantly changing. You know, a stack of continuations, they're not all going to be the same type. It depends of our, our, how our program, uh, what our program does. Uh, 
Um, what are we getting right now? Another, another, another error? Yeah, I think we don't have something quite right here. Cool. Do you want to, want to try the failing one or the? the yeah, the, I was I was again? just trying to run the failing one, but. Oh, oops, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. That one's so weird. Are, that one doesn't make any sense to me. Well, we're, I mean, I think we're doing something silly on here. Cannot be cast a, cannot be cast a string. Yeah, I have a feeling we may have the similar thing where we just need to. Um... Oh, E is a function. We have to call E. Oh, 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 we, we just, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we're going to make it lazy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, exit.fail E. Uh, right, because we did the same. Yeah. Uh, oh, I just saw it. There it is, 257. Cool. So I think we. And I think, yeah, yeah, exactly. And there you are. Cool. Nice. Okay, let's try that again. And because it says string okay. can't be in the. Yay. All right. So we got that working. Let's just try our other example. Commented it back. Let's try it. Hello. We're, oh, explode. Still got something. Success cannot be cast as boxed unit. That's fun. Where are we casting something as unit? Um, eight. Here, I'll detach from you and explore. We'll hunt it down. I'm wondering if it's in resuming. I'm adjusting the async cases, maybe not handling it, because that's the different thing about this one. So let's see. Want to just try my third workflow first, which is just a flat map and succeed? Uh, sure. So let's narrow it down to see if it is that async or, or just in something else. Oops, I didn't save in time. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, that's working fine. So, so I think we got, yeah, yeah. So I think we got something with the async case. What have we done? Doesn't seem obviously wrong. Hmm. So let's see. So it's in that. Is it calling that function? Uh, the success function is zip with par. What would what would it be doing? Oh, so it it's when it's trying to combine these two. It looks like. Mm hmm. But that's just going to be a a map or a, or a, a result of a flat map, I think. Yeah. And it says boxed unit. Okay. Is that because we're th we're throwing away the results yet and, and and making a unit there? Are we never calling that function? Exit dot success. Okay, so it's it's somewhere after we put something in a success node, because uh, we have a success at this point. So are we doing something weird for each observer? Oh, here. Oh, oh, yep. Okay. Wait. Okay. Continuation on success needs a success. Uh, I believe. Oh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm wrong here. No, you're right. Maybe it's Maybe the right, I opposite. Do we have an observer somehow that isn't the right type? Um, Take a look at that. Let's discuss. Register Zio. Uh, 
Yeah, what do we add to observers? <laughs> observers equals a uh, fiber message. Uh, is it join? Uh, could very well be join. Let's take a look at join. Because we're adding an observer, with unsafe add observer, which is an AT unit. And then... Oh, yeah, because un oh, so unsafe add observer, yes, that's exactly right. Because see, we're doing the cast here, but that cast is not correct. So yeah, that's exactly right. So this is going to be a exit EA to unit. Yeah, and then that'll have to change to be a C of succeed of. Uh, yeah, exit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, this will be. It already is then. exit. Mm -hmm. And so we just pass it the exit along. Is that right? We don't pass it as zero now. No. What does that callback need? What am I doing? Uh, so I think we want to do something like exit. Uh, well, we don't have exit.fold. Uh, let's give ourselves a little helper here. Uh, let's give ourselves a helper. Uh, where, is it? where are my Zio constructors? Uh, here. Uh, so let's give ourselves another helper called from exit. Uh, or actually, in, in Zio, we call this done. Uh, right, so this is going to take an exit, EA. That's going to return a Zio EA, and we can just match on that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, now we have, I think... to use it. <laughs> we have to use it back in the add uh, unsafe oh. added. Oh, yes. There it is. Or uh, in drawing, okay. 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 See so if we've tracked down our issue. Wonderful. Hello world, and then fail. Cool, cool, cool. From the second work workflow. All right, yep. perfect. Yep. And just to test with this failing one. If we instead succeed and then do a couple things with that, you know, yay value, a yep. print line, you know, uh, uh, a uh, succeed success. And then fail in here in the second one that we should basically do the same same thing. So we should see success, yay, and then fail of oops, some uh, whoops, a fail of whoops, which should then short circuit these two. Yeah. So good that does. <laughs> yeah. Okay, success, yay. So we made it here. This is a success. So we called the next callback, got our result. So we took the result of this, which was unit, passed it into this callback, which was a fail, and then we start unwinding the stacks. So these get added to the stack in reverse order, right? So we start from this callback, add that to the stack, then this, then this, then this, then this. So when we get to the bottom, we have to pop one off the stack, call it. Then once we get to the fail, we just keep popping off the stack until we get back to something that can handle uh, our continuation. So that seems to make sense. Yay. Yeah. One uh, down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, any any questions on that from anyone? Because yeah, I think that's kind of our first milestone. And we've now successfully added the error type. We've got operators and reduce and handle the errors and everything seems to be working correctly here. And inevitably, yes, we got a little lost in the, uh, in the <laughs> of, of type erasure. Uh, it, it happens. But, um, yeah, it was, I think is inevitable with these. Yeah, when you were doing this live with these uh, run times. Uh, but yeah, any questions in the Discord? Uh, no, uh, no, nothing since the, the the previous one. So, okay, yeah. I mean, maybe should we uh, stop it here? I mean, it's been an hour, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's one totally fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think the next step here would be to uh, generalize this to include cause, which that I think is going to be actually relatively straightforward. Of we're essentially going to go to that sealed trait exit. And this failure, instead of being an E, is going to be a cause of E. And we're going to introduce at least a simple version of a cause. And then we'll update our operators for that. And one of our causes is going to be interruption. And then that's going to kind of give us the infrastructure that we need to actually hand, have the idea of we can 
um, send interruption signals and potentially even handle them. Um, uh, and if we really want to build from there, then we can look at the idea of having regions where we can have interruption or not interruption. Okay, but, uh, one step at a time here. Uh, interruptible uh, masks. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. Uh, I like I like that. Uh, yeah, you know, we never, hopefully no one <laughs> really wanted to see only interruption. Really? I'm not sure if we promised, yeah, if... So at least we did something <laughs> interesting. Um, challenge in and of itself, hopefully you learned a little bit more about continuation stacks uh, and, and a little bit about the error model, but cool. Uh, no questions. So until next time, see awesome. you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Adam. Bye. Bye, everybody.